we have been on a journey 40 days of power i don't know how many of us has been following this precious program that god gave us are you been if you know if you know you have been following 40 days of power live or you are going through the messages you are really following can i see your hand up wave it you are following you are following you are following the 40 days of power program this program is for us and god has been you know building us as we are passing through the book of Acts, the lord has been releasing a lot of of his words sanctifying our life preparing our lives for what he wants to do in our lives and with our lives so i want to strongly encourage those of us who have not been joining please beginning from tomorrow try to be there if you are not in the whatsapp group so that you can get the link you meet our media people so that they will put you in the whatsapp group so that when the link is released for each day you'll be able to join uh, the link either in youtube or telegram uh, for what god has been doing um, the lord has spoken to us in diverse ways under diverse topics as we were studying the book of acts for example on monday he began to show us the indices of heaven sent revival on tuesday this uh, last week we began to see spoilers of revival on wednesday he began to show us the atmosphere of revival and then on thursday very important very powerful the focus of revival then on friday the substance of revival and then yesterday we saw wisdom the wisdom that amplify revival all from the book of acts we have been on it now i would like us to go to that book again as we study for today look at chapter 6 we have studied from verse 1 to 7 that was yesterday we are going to move forward as we look at uh, verses 8 today Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Please look at your Bible as we read. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogues, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and the Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. Verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then the stubborn men, which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they steered up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said this man this particular man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law for we have heard him say that this jesus of nazareth shall destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Chapter 7, verse 1. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? Verse 2. And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Shannon. Now, that was a very long story. I wondered how they were paying attention to the story that they know. Now, till verse 51. He told that story from that verse 2 to verse 50. 
Then verse 51 of chapter 7. He now faced them. He said, you stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which should before of the coming of the just one. Of whom you have been now the betrayer and the murderers. Whom who have received the law by the disposition of angels and has not kept it. And when they heard these things, they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. May you see the glory of God. And saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they, they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said so, he fell asleep. What a man. And what numerous lessons to learn from this brother. If you were paying attention to what God showed us yesterday, you will observe that Stephen was one of the seven deacons that were chosen by the multitude of disciples because they came to this spot in the move of God in their midst. And they observed that if this move of God will continue, there should be a division of labor. Because there is already a murmuring going on. The Hellenist, the Gentile proselytes, they were complaining that their widows were being neglected. And so the two have called for a meeting and said, please, this matter will distract us. This matter will strangulate this revival. It has the capacity of quenching the move of the spirit in our midst. Before it happened, let us select seven men full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Seven men of honest report. And the Bible said Stephen was chosen. Then Philip and then several others. Five of them, uh, seven of them. And then there was a remark about Stephen. In that uh, verse, I think five or six, he said he was a man full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Now, their work is to become administrators, to manage the affairs of food. They are to ensure that things go well in the kitchen, in the cooking of the food and the distribution of food. But this man will not allow himself to be tied in the kitchen or in a, a, a administrative work in the church and forget the focus. If you can remember the day God was speaking to us on the focus of revival, you will remember that the threat that the Pharisees, the threat that the high priest, the council, the you know, chief priests were threatening the, the disciples you know, was that they should speak not in the name of Jesus. They say, they say you can talk to talk anything you want, you can pray, you can do anything, but don't speak to any man again in this name. You can speak to yourself in this name, you can speak to God, but don't talk to anybody. That was they were so focused because they know that this is actually what is causing problem. Are you getting that? And we also saw that the apostles they understood that this is the focus of this revival. Prayer is wonderful. 
But prayer is only a preparation to be able to, to enable us to be able to focus on the main thing around this revival. On the Pentecost day, if they have only spoken in tongues without Peter preaching the gospel, talking to the multitude about Christ, that experience would have been a waste. And even when he raised a crippled man from the gate and the crowd gathered, if he has not taken advantage of that opportunity to address them, I mean, that particular miracle would have been a wasted. Are you getting it? It would have been wasted. So, he, they knew that the focus of this revival is preaching Christ and teaching Christ. In the first scenario, when they arrested Peter and John in chapter 4, they warned them that they should not speak again in this name. And they said, judge you, men and brethren, whether it is right to obey you or to obey God. That God has raised Jesus from the dead. He has made us witnesses and he has commanded us to preach Christ to every man. And that is what, what we are doing. How dare you? Who, who are you to stop us and to say we should not do what God said we should do? So the Bible said they threatened them. After they thre threatened them, they went back to their company and they prayed and said, God, give us boldness so that we will preach this, this gospel with all boldness and that signs and wonders will be done by the hand of your, by the name of your holy child, Jesus. And after that, they continued preaching. And then as they continued preaching, it came to a point where the whole Jerusalem were now flooded by the gospel and people were repenting multitude were coming to christ and so you know what happened they they arrested them immediately and said did we not warn you not to preach in this man's name again now you have filled the whole jerusalem with this man's teaching such that we are even feeling guilty ourselves and peter said we must obey god rather than men yes God commanded us to. So you see the bone of contention. You see the fight. The fight is to shut your mouth so that you will not preach Christ in that your class as a student. To shut your mouth in that bus that you will not preach Christ in your family, in your neighborhood, in your place of work. If you want to pray, no problem. But don't talk to anybody about this man. The Bible says when they threaten them, beating them, they let them go. And daily, we have been looking at that verse for the past two days. Acts 5.42. Daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and to preach Christ. They continued. They now resolved that every house must be visited. No house will be exempted. Every house must be touched. If they knock on your door and you say you are born again, they say sit down. We have something to offer you. We want to teach you Christ. If you are not born again, they will preach Christ to you because preaching of Christ is for unbelievers. Teaching of Christ is for believers. And when you teach believers Christ, Christ will be formed in them. Galatians 4.19 My little children, of whom I travel in bed again, until Christ be formed in you. So it's not just that you are born again, speaking in tongues, but the life of Christ is not really formed in you. Your attitude, your ways, your conduct is not yet showing Jesus. That is what happens when, when you teach Christ to a believer. You see Christ coming out. The reason why we don't have much of Christ coming out of the life of several believers today is because the people that are in the pulpit are not teaching Christ. They teach faith. They teach prosperity. They teach so many things, but they fail to teach Christ. And when you don't teach Christ, you see people that are going to church, but they are telling lies. Because the Bible says that in him there is no sin if you have christ you can't be a sinner in first peter chapter 2 verse 21 he said that god has given us an example in christ and has called us to this that christ suffered he left us an example that we follow in his steps he said who committed no sin so you dare not say that i i am now like christ when you are still telling lies, you are still watching pornography, you are still committing masturbation, you are still living in anger, you are still living in unforgiveness, jealousy. No. This is the kind of thing we see among believers. Anger controls their life. And yet, they are in the church, workers, in the choir, singing. I mean, but the life of Jesus is not there. The works of Jesus is also nowhere to be found. So, the goal of this revival is preaching Christ and teaching Christ to men so that Christ will be formed. 
Paul said in Colossians 1 verse 29, 28 and 29, he said, my goal is that I preach Christ and I warn every man and I teach every man so that I will be able to present every man perfect in Christ. To present every man perfect. So he's not just saying, eh, nobody is perfect. Are you perfect? I'm not perfect. No, the goal is that you must be perfect. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 48, you must be perfect for your heavenly father is what? Perfect. That's where we are going. And that's why we are, we are insisting that Christ must be taught and Christ must be preached. Because that is the focus of revival. Now listen, where we are studying currently, we saw how these seven men has been chosen. But despite the fact that they are chosen, they are still in the streets. One of them, Stephen. The Bible said that Stephen is full of faith and power. He did great wonders among the people. And then some people came up to begin to argue with him. Now, you see, how did Stephen single himself out? Who is Stephen? Excuse me, Stephen is not one of the 12 apostles. Because somebody will say he's one of the ministers, he's one of the elders. No, he's just an ordinary brother. In fact, there was no name called Stephen, just like Barnabas before Pentecost. So if you will permit me, I will say, People like Barnabas, people like Stephen, they were among the 3,000 that repented on Pentecost Day. Are you getting that? But they are following. They are not doing what some of us are doing today. This Sunday you will come. Next Sunday you will not come. No. They were consistent, following, growing, learning. And as Stephen keep moving, keep learning, he came to a point where it is not just Peter that is doing wonders or great wonders. Stephen, full of faith, full of power, did great wonders among the people. And he became an object single-handedly of persecution that several of them gathered together. The Bible said they want to argue with him, but they couldn't resist the wisdom and the spirit, the force with which he was speaking. They tried to resist the wisdom. They couldn't understand how and where this man is coming from. If they ask a question, he will come with a higher wisdom. And if he's speaking, you can't stop him. That's why, you know, when we are reading, I couldn't read 50 or 49 verses where Stephen was telling the story. Some of us, you have read it. Acts chapter 7. He was telling the story of how Abraham, from Abraham, through Joseph, through Moses, high priest was sitting there listening with attention. High priest, you don't know the story again. Are you getting me at all? It's not about what the man is saying. It's about the spirit that is behind what he's saying. You can't, you can't just resist. You have to be quiet. You have to follow. Even if it is something that is familiar to what you know before. The spirit behind the preaching is the matter. You know, some of us don't know that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is one message. Are you getting me? What is the gospel? The gospel is the story of love. How God, out of love for man, seeing that man has been condemned to death because of sin. The Bible says, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and has fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, uh, the wages of sin is death. Now, if all have sinned and the wages of sin is death, all must die. But God who is rich in mercy, out of love for mankind, sent Jesus to die the death we are supposed to die so that we can have his life as he raises him from the dead. And now, seated at the right hand of God, he has made him a Lord. Therefore, we are supposed to receive him into our life as our Lord and Savior. This is the gospel. It, it doesn't change. You don't add anything to it. It is not the story. It's familiar. But when you stand up in that class, when you stand up in that bus, when you call that unbeliever, he must have heard that story several times. But preaching it again, the spirit, they couldn't resist the wisdom and the spirit behind the preaching. What a man, Stephen, he finished his work as a, 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 a seven deacon around kitchen. The next thing, he's in the street. Because he was doing great wonders, not among the disciples, but among the people. And listen, you know, when they are playing match, the person that is carrying the ball is the person that the camera, cameraman is focusing on. The person that is carrying the ball is the person that everybody who is in that field, in that pitch, I mean, both those who are playing, their eyes is from who? The person. The person, people that are watching, both 
life and those who are watching online their eyes is where on the person the referee that is blowing whistle where is his eyes please on the person the enemies that are attacking to collect the ball from him where is their eyes on the person when you see persecutions around you when you see attack or attacks coming from the devil when you see several things standing and working against you at the same time please don't be discouraged. Know that you are carrying the ball. There is something about you. There is something about your destiny that the devil has seen and is fighting. Is trying to work against. Is trying to discourage you. When the devil is attacking discipleship, fighting what we are doing, I know the reason. You see what we are doing? God is here. And God has, has decided, he has decided, whether the devil like it or not, that with this, he is going to affect thousands hundreds of thousands millions and even billions of life as we follow him now that's why you see attack you see people coming from the other angle all kinds of things we are not perturbed we are not disturbed look at stephen why is it that several people gathered against one man they are no longer pursuing the apostles or other people it is stephen the bible says and stephen full of power full of faith did great wonders among the people not an apostle not one of the leaders not even an elder a young man Stephen full of power full of faith did not wonders remember is a worker you know he could have used an excuse that I'm already serving in the church I'm already working in the choir I'm already working as an archer therefore after working as an archer he will move out to go and preach Christ to the unbelievers. And as he's preaching Christ, he will see a crippled person. He will raise the crippled person from, from, from where he is because he has the faith and the power. And Stephen, full of power, Stephen, full of faith, did great wonders and signs among the people. Not wonder, great wonder. Wonders are in level. Are you getting me? I pray that for every one of us, you will be another Stephen. That amen is too low. Amen. That not just an ordinary person. You know the problem we have today in the church? The problem we have today in the church is that we want to become people that will be receiving miracles. And even the way several pastors and ministers have organized their church system is that, you know, people come to receive miracle, Miracle service, anointing service, this one. No. The purpose of God is that the believers, we are the miracle workers. How did the apostles train Stephen that Stephen at this position, at this point in time, is no longer looking for miracle? Are you following me at all? He's a convert at Pentecost Day just a few days ago. And now, he is a miracle worker. May you turn to a miracle worker. Instead of just looking for miracle, looking for healing, may you become the person that will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. I'm not just saying, please pray for me, I am sick. May you become the person that will speak into somebody's life and his situation and condition will change. I'm not just looking for the man of God that will speak, speak on your life. That's what discipleship is aimed at. To train you so that you will become not just a miracle receiver, but a miracle worker. To move from being among the crowd that are looking for one bread and fish to being the miracle giver. Stephen, full of power. Stephen, full of faith. Did great wonders. And what? Miracles. Not a wonder. Wonders. Read your Bible carefully. Not miracle. Miracles. You know, when the authors of the Bible are reporting, they don't report everything. You can imagine the number of miracles that Stephen did. A, an ordinary brother that created, I mean, caused problem in the kingdom of darkness. And everybody gathered. The council gathered. The high priest gathered. The Pharisees gathered. The senators gathered. And they brought one ordinary brother. Say, stand here. Where are you coming from? Why is, why are you, why are your, your work, your ministry? You know, the Bible said they tried, they tried to oppose him. They tried to argue with him. They couldn't resist him. And then the suborn men, I, 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 that English was a new English for me. I have to check it in dictionary. King James said they suborn men. When I checked it, I noticed that suborn me, they bribed men. They have to call some people and give them bribe. And say, all of you, we are bribing you so that you will get a false witness against Stephen. And they, they collected the bribe. 
and they come up and they say, hey, well, um, this man, he ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this temple, against this house, again. When they finish, the Bible said they looked at him. Do you see when we read it? They looked at, the man is in a different dimension. You see, may, may you enter into a different realm where men are gossiping against you. Accusing you falsely. You know, some of us, when they accuse you falsely, you start crying because they are spoiling your name. Look at Stephen. They are saying those things. He was not in their level. He entered angelic realm. I sense that the angels that came to take him home has arrived. And you know, the story of how sense goes home is that the angels will come and you will transform to the angels so that two, or two angels normally and you will, be, they, you will become three angels and you move. That's how you know we have heard it so so i sense that as they were accusing him the man has has getting ready to move and he has transformed into an angel the bible says every one of them in the council they look at the face of the person they are accusing they notice that he's no longer at their level may this be your testimony in the name of jesus christ that when people are lying against you, when people are looking for your trouble, when people are trying to say, hey, please, come, let's quarrel, uh, you have done this, and all of that, you are in the heavenly realm. You are in a dimension of glory. You are not even at their level at all. They looked at him, they noticed that this person is not a human being. He's not even responding to us. What a man. And then when they ask him question, can you defend yourself? He said, man, I'm bread and listen. Let me, let me run through our history. And they were listening attentively. Anytime I read the whole story, I say, what? High priest, you are listening to the story that you are teaching every day. Ah, ah. It is not the story. It is the spirit of the preacher. It is the anointing. It is the power behind the story. May you become an anointed man. May you become a woman full of the spirit. That even when you are sharing a familiar story, people will be... I mean, arrested at your preaching, at your talk. Even if it's an ordinary conversation, you are conversing with somebody. Somebody is, I mean, getting life out of your discussion in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, when he finished the story, he now looked at them and said, you stiff-necked eh, and rebellious. Hi! Stephen, where did you get your boldness from? How come you are talking to high priests this way? You see, when the unction, when the utterance he came upon John the Baptist. He saw the Pharisees coming. He said, you what? You brood of vipers. Who has warned you? You are not trying to pet words. As the words are coming, you are speaking because you are not speaking from the realm of men. You are speaking from the realm of the spirit. And you don't mind who is offended. Men that are arrowheads of revival, that causes, I mean, the move of God to start and to continue. They are not men that has respect for persons. They speak as the spirit gives them utterance. He said, you, you stiff-necked people, you have always resisted the Holy Ghost, just like your fathers. He said, which of the prophets that your father did not kill and persecute? You have come again. Eh? As they were talking and gnashing their teeth at him. You know what? You know what? The man moved again. He, <laughs> oh my God. The Bible said he looked steadfastly into heaven and he saw the son of man standing at the right hand of god jesus was never standing at the right hand of god he was sitting before but because a saint is about to return home the man left a sitting position are you there jesus stood up and said this is my faithful matter i'm ready to receive him he will not compromise his faith at the face of persecution at the face of threat what is it that is happening today? I mean, your job is at risk and you are compromising and denying Christ. Somebody's life is at risk and is in a different realm. Saying, I saw the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. We have Christians or believers in quote that cannot stand for Jesus. A little persecution, a little suffering. They are compromising their faith. They are yielding to the pressure around their family, around all kinds of things that are happening around them. They will not stand firm. For Stephen, he wouldn't mind what they are thinking, what they are saying. He only saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God, ready to receive him. And he will not close his mouth. 
he will have to say it because he has been telling them that this Jesus I'm talking to you about you people are his betrayers and murderers you betrayed him in the presence of Pilate you received and declared that you wanted a thief Barabbas other than Jesus now he is now risen this same Jesus is not just risen he is where standing at the right hand of God he declared it when he declared it of course he knew the consequence what was the consequence they rushed him they said what what they closed their ear <laughs> and then they took him out of the city eh? and then they stoned him and as he was as they were stoning him he was not telling them please let me recant let me beg he was praying he said lord jesus receive my spirit and to prove that he doesn't have anything against them what was the prayer he prayed for them he said forgive them look at what is going on today in the church look look just look at just because somebody is stopping another person's promotion eh they are asking you to pray that the person will die look at the bible let's look at the bible Stephen, these people use false accusation to bring him to counsel and they are about to kill him was he praying that they will die die by fire you are not following me at all please talk to me you see sometimes when you talk like this somebody will say does it mean that all these people that are praying this prayer all these pastors all these ministers will go to hell listen carefully let's look at jesus what kind of thing did he teach he said you heard that it was told them of old love your friends and hate your enemies but i say to you now love your enemies pray for those that persecute you i mean do good to those that hate you that is jesus i don't know any other jesus that want to pray against those that are persecuting him he practicalized it also when he was being crucified like stephen what kind of prayer did he pray for them father forgive them i have forgiven them for they don't know what they are doing and you tell me that somebody is a pastor is a minister and is praying or teaching your congregation to pray that your enemy will die have you read about stephen so we say i am not jesus what about stephen i heard somebody say i am not jesus what about stephen is stephen also can you also say i'm not stephen stephen is not even an apostle he has given us an example that you can pray for your what your enemies he said father lord do not lay this sin against them i have forgiven them please also forgive them i am not in the same level where they are you know some of you just because your neighbor provoked you just because your roommate provoked you your husband your wife provoked you for one day two days you are not talking to him you are not talking to her and you say you are a believer where did you get that from look at a man that is being killed and he's praying for the people can you even pray for your husband when he do something that is hurting to you can you pray for for your wife can you pray for your roommate i remember some time ago one of one of the sisters that are i mean staying with us she was just doing things that will always lead you to provocation i mean i was holding myself i said i'm not going to but i know that i'm not happy i was like so one day i just say okay let me pray for her do you know when i began to pray for her listen carefully when i began to pray for her because i, I was like i'm going to confront her for all these things she's doing but i i heard the holy spirit say have you prayed so i said let me pray when i began to pray for her the lord began to, to tell me so many things about this sister he said this lady look at her problem look at the reason why she's behaving the way she's behaving she's behaving this way because she has this problem look at it i mean from that day compassion from that day joy from that day peace if we follow the wisdom from above we will live a normal christian life but when somebody is offending you a fellow market person you came to market in the place where you used to keep your goods the person has stood there and you are saying mama and kechi please this is my my space and the person will say azuanoka eh? when you finish talking come and touch me now as the person is saying that you know normal thing is to get angry start fighting start quarreling but if you know the life of jesus you pray for your enemies you pray for your enemies 
That's why we are talking about discipleship because you see, this thing must become a life coming from inside. What kind of person are you, Stephen, that people accuse you falsely? He didn't touch you, you didn't, didn't defend yourself. Do you notice that everything that he has said, he never said anything in defense of what they were accusing him? He never. He just finished telling them story and then now began to you know talk to them from the realm of the spirit from the dimensions of glory and as they are he's talking to them he entered another dimension he went into the next realm and he saw the heavens open he said i see the heaven open i am on the earth but where i'm looking where my eyes is fixed is not on the earth i'm not looking at the nigerian economy my attention is not on the things around me that are coming to distract i fix my eyes on heaven and what do i see i see jesus open my eyes to see jesus who is seated when temptations come in the face of lack in the face of challenges when people are trying to take away your rights your privileges and they are trying to boast that they are going to deal with you open my eyes to see jesus ah seated upon that throne when people notice your weakness and they are taking advantage of your weakness to deal with you to, to cause you to suffer and they are dealing with you in such a way that you will become so uncomfortable open my eyes to see jesus seated upon that room now listen don't think open my eyes to see jesus standing on the throne except you are ready to die are, are you getting me it is when he is ready to receive a scent that he stands are you getting that yes but that's why we are saying he has to sit how many of you want to die now <laughs> you know what we say spirit of untimely death accident eh? we bind what do you sh shout amen and that's true we don't need to die until you accomplish that which is written about you yes for Stephen he has finished his course for Stephen he has run his race for Stephen he has I mean fought a good fight he has concluded the agenda of heaven over his life carefully followed the discipleship program that launched him from ordinary believer to a miracle worker a wonder worker ah brothers and sisters can we dwell a bit on the verse that said and Stephen verse 8 full of faith and power i want us to look at that verse carefully and stephen full of faith and power please listen the word full in that verse is showing us that power and faith is a they are measurable quantities full of faith and power in other words you can have faith but you are not full of faith in other words you can have power but you are not full of power now listen please this is very important the reason why several of us cannot do great wonders, cannot do great miracles, is not because you don't have faith. It's because your faith is not full enough to cause the miracle to happen. Your faith is not full enough to cause the wonder to happen. And Stephen, he was able to cause great wonders, great miracles to happen because he was full. Full is talking about quantity. You can have a bottle of water full of water but you can have a bottle of water also half filled with water you can have just one small quantity of water inside the bottle now listen i used to illustrate it this way if you see a car and you want to push the car listen you will give all your strength to push the car but the truth is that all your strength is not enough to move the car so sometimes when somebody says i have done my best the question you are going to ask him is please before you do your best did you discover whether your best can can, can can handle the situation because it's not about doing your best it's about what is your best have you defined your best I, I, are you getting me at all now the, the the kind of faith that can you know cause wonders miracles to happen is one that is full 
Now, there are three dimensions of faith. I'm going to run through it quickly. Three dimensions of faith. How many dimensions of faith? There is receiving dimension of faith. Without faith, you cannot receive anything from God. Faith is the spiritual hand with which you receive things from God. If you don't have a physical hand and somebody is giving you anything, you can't collect it with your eyes, you can't collect it with your head, you can't collect it with your leg. The only organ in your body you can use to collect anything from anybody is what? Your hand. If you don't have hand and I'm giving you a pen, excuse me, there's no way you will collect that pen. You can't hold it because you don't have hand. Faith is the spiritual hand with which we receive things from God. And that was why Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, he said, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received it and you shall have it. When you pray, so if you don't believe that you receive it, you will not have it. James chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. He said, if any one of you lack wisdom, let him ask God and God will give you wisdom. He said in verse 6, but, but, let him ask in faith. Because if you don't have faith and you are asking anything, he said, let that man know that he will never be able to receive anything from God if you don't ask with what? Faith. So, there is a receiving dimension. I said, there is a way to pray and there is a way to receive. If you learn how to pray prayers and you don't know how to receive answers from God, you, you wonder why you are praying and your prayers are not answered. Because praying a prayer point is different from receiving answers. No, it's true. Are you getting that? Now, it is only when you enter the realm and dimension of faith, you'll be able to collect answer for whatever you ask from God. So, the receiving dimension of faith is the lowest dimension of faith. It's like when we have primary school, secondary school, and the higher institution. The receiving power of faith or receiving dimension of faith is at the lowest. But what do we see today? The church today has been brought to that level and has stayed at that level. So when you say that you see somebody is teaching faith or preaching faith, everything is preaching and teaching around faith is the receiving dimension. Faith to have prosperity. Faith to receive healing. Faith to receive wealth and health and all of that. That's what, and you see people, because they are looking for miracle, they are looking for uh, healing, they are looking for, when you teach, that, this is good. There's nothing wrong about it. But let me say this. The church in the book of Acts, as we are studying this revival, what we notice about them is that they exited the level of, I mean, the receiving dimension of faith and they move to the second dimension, which is the overcoming dimension, and to the third dimension, which is what? The wonder-working dimension. Doing exploit by faith. Now listen, the second dimension of faith is the overcoming dimension. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, he said, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. There are several things. The moment you say, I give my life to Christ, you have drawn a battle line with the devil. The devil will not come personally and say, I am the devil. I have come to fight you. But he's going to come through so many means. He can come to you through economic situation. He can come to you through people. He can come to you through, from persecution, from temptation, to fight in several ways. He can even come to you through worldliness to distract you. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our what? Our faith. When we hold fast the profession of our faith, as Hebrew 10 23 told us, he said, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith because he that promised us is faithful. He said, Faithful is he that promised, and he will do it. We should not waver in the midst of persecution. We should not waver in the midst of tribulation. We should learn to fight the good fight of faith. Now, these brethren in the book of Acts, they left the receiving power of a uh, dimension of faith and entered the overcoming and they were in the overcoming that was why every persecution that came to them they overcame it they stood strong despite the threatening because they have entered the overcoming dimension of faith brothers and sisters please listen carefully we need to step up are you hearing me what did i say now we need to step up for you to be said or for you to be said that you are full of faith you are not just operating at the receiving level. You are not just operating at the overcoming level. There is another level. What is the next level? Doing exploit by faith. Wonder walking. John 14, 12. 
Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than this shall he do. Please, let me ask, have you ever meditated on that scripture? That Jesus said, He that put his faith in me, He that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do. Is, is a dimension of faith. That was where Stephen entered into. And he came to the point where he began to do wonders. He began to do miracles. Not just wonders, not just miracles, but great wonders, great miracles. To the extent that the people around, they were like, something is wrong. Let's, let's, let's stop this young man before everybody will believe in this their Jesus. And they began to argue with him. Basically, they noticed that you can't win him by argument. The wisdom is too much. The wisdom is not earthly wisdom. It's heavenly wisdom. The force, the spirit behind is speaking. The only solution is to bribe men to accuse him falsely. Yet, he's not even at that level. The overcoming dimension of faith is what Apostle Paul was writing in Ephesians chapter 6 when he was talking about the, 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 the armor of God, the weapons of our warfare, if you remember that, you know, he mentioned the helmet of salvation. He mentioned what? The, the, the shoe of the preparation of the gospel. He mentioned what? The belt of truth. Then he came to the shield. Do you remember that? Verse 16, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. He said, the shield. Take up, take up the shield of faith with which you will quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Devil has fiery darts. He shoots it at believer. It could be that of discouragement. It could be that of temptation. It could be that of sickness. It can shoot at you at any time. But when you take up the shield of faith, for example, he, the devil already know. He has already known that any dart of sickness, any dart of any kind of dart he shot at, we take up the shield of faith. The Bible says we quench it. When we say we don't get sick from January to December, it's not as if the dart of sickness does not come. It comes. But when it comes, what do we do? We take up the shield of faith. That's the overcoming level. We quench it. You see, I was talking to one of our sisters some time ago. I said, when you look at that growth on your body, you put your hand there and say, how dare you come here? Don't you know that this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? You devil, vanish from here. Get away from here. You are taking up the shield of faith. We overcome all kinds of situations. You see, if you don't take up the shield of faith, the devil can shut a dart, discouragement. You will begin to get discouraged. That was what happened to Elijah. After doing exploit, after causing, that, causing rain to fall, causing fire to fall, and Jezebel spoke a word and said, Gods, the gods do so to me. If by this time tomorrow, your head is still on your head. And the man of God with all your exploit ran away. You didn't ever think about the declaration how to, I mean, is it that? Is it that? When you learn to take up the shield of faith, you will quench every fiery dart. That lack is a dart. When a dart of lack or whatever de depth comes to you, take up the shield of faith. Come on, speak out and say, I am not going to be in lack because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. I mean, you take the scripture because those that overcome, they overcome by the word. Are you getting that? When he came to Jesus the first time, he, he quoted the word. He came the second. Don't allow the devil to put you in a corner. I mean, whatever be the problem and situation, the Bible says the only victory that overcomes the word is not discussion. It's not just, there are people that pray, but they don't have faith. The apostles were with Jesus on the road to, um, he said, let us cross over to the other side. And as they were on the road, the, the, the sea, there were storms. And they were praying and saying, Master, don't you care that we are perishing here? Look at the storm of economic crisis. Look at the price of fuel. Look at dollar, dollar to naira. Look at how things are, you know, transport before it is 50 naira from uh, CPS to Old Park. Now it is 100 naira. Ah! Don't you care that we are perished? Don't you care that we cannot pay our, our children's school fees again? Jesus woke up and said, Peace! Be still. He spoke to the situation. When you are operating at the overcoming level, the dimension, you don't pray. What do you do? You speak. You speak to the situation. You speak to the mountain. You say to the mountain, Come on, before I open my eyes and close, Be 
it out removed. You lack. You know, some of you don't know that you can command money to come to you and money will come. You don't know that. It is a dimension. And I think you like that one. <laughs> you like commanding money to come. But don't stop there. Because there is what? A wonder working dimension. Where you are standing. He said, these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, those who believe. By their faith, in my name, they shall what? Cast out devils. In my name, they shall lay their hands on the sick. And what will happen to the sick? No drug, no lab test. The sick shall recover. No teaching hospital, no general hospital. The sick shall recover. They shall lay their hands on the sick. See, we train believers, not just to be receivers, that are receiving houses, lands, receiving this. Look at the acts. They are not just receiving. They are overcoming all kinds of persecutions, all kinds of surrendering, all kinds of council meetings, all kinds of threats. They were overcoming. And not just overcoming, they were also performing. Those who know their God, what shall happen to them? They shall be strong and they shall do exploit. Those who know that their God is faithful. If you know 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24, he said, Faithful is he that promised he will do it. If you know God as a faithful God, you know that when he says something in his word, he doesn't go back. You know that when he gives you a promise, he is too faithful to fail. If you know about the faithfulness of God, who said to you, I, will, I, I have settled your marriage. I have settled your, 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 your whatever you are looking for, your job. I have given it to you, your child. I have settled your child. If you know this faithful God who promised you in the scripture that you will not be in lack, you will not struggle, you put your faith in him. If you know that God loves you, the same way that he loved Jesus, do you know that the same way God loved Jesus is the same way he loves you? You will put your trust in him. If you know that God, God has the power to do all things, to change all situations, you will put your faith in him. He's the maker of heaven and earth. And there is nothing he cannot do. Don't tell me that you are 45. Somebody has married at the age of 62. 62. Where is Joshua? What was the age of your auntie when she got married? 62 years. Married powerfully. Married well. 62 years. His auntie, I think the sister of your mother, a believer. Yes. That's how God blesses his people. So some of you that are, you know, sometimes you see sisters, they will go and join the women's wing. And during the women's day, they will tie rubber and they are now saying, sister, what are you doing? Come out from that place. You are not a woman. Except you, how do you lose faith that you will not marry again? Dress well. Go and get good young ladies' clothes. You know, iron it very well. Dress, dress cute. And be telling God that my marriage is settled forever, oh Lord. Your word is settled in heaven. I am bringing it to the earth. My marriage is settled in heaven and it's going to manifest on the earth. I am here as an ambassador to bring the settled marriage in heaven to pass on the earth. That's what we do. Our work is to bring the settled word in heaven. We are to manifest on the earth. My tide is settled because God said to me that when I serve him, Exodus 23, 25 and 26, he will bless my bread and water. He will not allow anyone to be barren among us. He will, not, he will take sickness from our midst. Excuse me, I will not be barren. I will not have only girls. I will have boys. I will not have only boys. I will have girls if you want because some of you, once you have that one, you are settled. Because, you know, they don't disturb you. Your mother-in-law will not disturb you if you have only boys. Eh? But if it's only girls, what will happen? Uh -huh. Yes! We operate... See, listen, when they say that Stephen is full of faith, what he's saying is that Stephen is full of faith in the receiving dimension, is full of faith in the overcoming dimension, come to him, he will give you what you, what you, what you are looking for. I mean, just be the devil or assume the devil and come to where he's, you know, sleeping or he will show you shege and fire. He will tell you that I am operating from a realm that is higher than your realm. The Bible says that he raised us up and made us sit together with Christ in the heavenly places, far above all principalities, all powers, all dominion, all name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. That's where we are seated. I read Colossians 1 verse 16. I shouted. I said, what is this? He said, by him all things were created. By him all things were created. Whether visible or invisible. Whether it is principalities or powers or dominions or thrones. He said, 
everything is created by him and for him the day i saw it i said wow so principalities were created for my lord ha! all of you will serve him under my watch all principalities because you are created for him all powers you are created for him he created you and you you have to serve him and that is why anybody here under any attack sickness trouble you are not going with it the, 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 the anointing is too heavy for you to come here and live the way you came no it's not possible your situation is changing i will soon make the declaration because we are not just talkers we are actors we have entered into the realm where these apostles are operating the bible says stephen full of faith i don't have time to talk about full of power my time is up i would have shown you something about power there is a dimension dimension of power power is also in dimension you can have power but you are not full of power and when you're not full of power you are limited in some certain things you can you can do and you cannot do stephen can they replace that name stephen with your name and say full of faith full of what power deed great wonders and signs among the people that's where we are operating i don't know whether you are interested in shifting from being a receiver to a giver a miracle receiver to what you have to take your discipleship seriously you have to be consistent you have to be consistent stephen was consistent he doesn't miss his discipleship programs he is always there he said to distractions wait economy that is trying to stop you wait i have a journey with god i want to achieve his purpose for my life in my lifetime even when you made him an altar in the church he said you can't catch me here i'm in the street the next uh, once he finished his work there he's in the street he's preaching christ that which is the focus of revival he was never distracted from it i pray that god will help us is anybody challenged to pray this evening please rise on your feet and pray say to god if stephen not a, uh, not an apostle not a minister is full of power full of faith why can't i be full of faith i am moving from where i am I am entering. See, nothing will ever stop or challenge me again. I am taking up the overcoming dimension of faith to overcome whatever it is in my body. If it is sickness, the Bible says, by his stripes, you are healed. Who told you that you should carry that sickness? As a believer, when somebody has paid for your health, touch your body and say, this sickness, you can continue to be here. Enough is enough. I can't carry you anymore. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Stephen, full of faith. Can you begin to pray? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in a known language. I am shifting dimensions. No longer at the receiving end. I should move at the doing end. At the giving end. At the wonder working end. Labasoka Zeka. Emahila. Landarabashandarabakande.